All right, we have uh, head coach Roy Williams. We have Marcus Page. We have Bryce Johnson. I suppose I should say that we finally have Theo Pinson up here. <laughs> we'll start with an opening statement from coach. Then we will throw it to questions for the student athletes. Uh, if you have a question, we have a couple of microphone holders. Just ask, for, just raise your hand. They'll bring you one. Uh, your name and your outlet uh, before you ask your question. So, coach, if you can get us started. <laughs> You want me to make the opening announcement, or you want Theo? Don't be stealing my drink. My fault. My fault. Get the first band. We invited Theo because we knew he was going to invite himself, so we might as well just make it legit and let him come. But uh, can't be any happier for these guys and the ones in those locker rooms than I am right now. It was a sensational basketball game. It was frustrating for us in the first half. We weren't doing a very good job of winning the tempo battle or guarding them. And I think that was more frustrating than anything else. Uh, Bryce kept us in the game with his jump shots, and I wanted him to get inside more so we could see if we get him in foul trouble. Uh, but we're still, you know, at half we were up five. And in the second half, we got it going a little bit, and then all of a sudden they made a huge run. And uh, it started by just uh, Kennedy's not even up here. We got the ball, and we're going down, and there's going to be three on zero, and Kennedy doesn't pass it soon enough. And then all of a sudden it's a turnover going back the other direction, and they score 10 or 11 or 12 in a row at that point. I didn't call a timeout because I've always coached every day to handle things. Uh, Theo had used a timeout when he made a great steal to end their run, and I thought that was fine. Uh, but I had confidence in my guys, and Marcus took the words right out of my mouth before I could even say it in the timeout. He said, guys, they made runs. It's a game of runs. We're going to make a run. And I was going to tell them a thing I'd already told them before the game at halftime. It's not supposed to be easy to get to the Final Four, and we can handle this. But uh, certainly proud of our guys and everybody up here and all the ones in the locker room. Uh, questions for the student athletes. Uh, we'll start in the aisle with Mike. Michael Luongo, AP broadcast for uh, Marcus and for, uh, for Bryce. Talk about the ability to respond the way you did. They showing the maturity, the leadership, and the composure to come back the way you did when they made that run and then answer back the way you guys did. Just where does that come from? I got it. Want me to do it? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Well, First of all, I would like to apologize for that technical foul because, I mean, that was probably the biggest thing that sparked that run. And, I mean, it's, it's really dumb on my part to, to put my teammate in a situation like that and be a leader on this team. I don't want to be able to do that and have myself not be in the game and hurting them at the same time I get in the tech. So, I mean, but, I mean, my teammates did a very good job of just, just playing. I mean, they, they really stepped up in the time of need when we – and Marcus, like Coach said, Marcus just came in the huddle and was like, hey, we've, they're, they're going to go on a, on a run. I mean, we just got to go on a run, too. So, I mean, I, I really appreciate those guys just stepping up in the time like that. And Marcus? Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. The, that's, that swing was huge. We got up 11, uh, and then they erased the 11-point deficit so fast that, you know, we had no choice but to keep playing. You know, it was a, uh, I kept telling the guys, it was a long game. You know, was, we had all the time in the world to just play better. Uh, and then Theo gave us a big lift. Uh, Kennedy gave us a huge lift in that stretch. Our defense got a lot better. Uh, we did a better job containing the ball and, and locating shooters and stuff. And then once we got in our rhythm uh, and knocked down some shots, it was game. Up here in row three, second seat. Henry Bushnell, SB Nation. Marcus, in the last minute, minute and a half, was it tough to not crack? I know you, a couple of times you almost broke into a smile, and then you yelled something over towards the table. First, what would you yell, and was it difficult to not crack? Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, we've seen some crazy things happen in this tournament, so you want to stay in the moment and make sure that, you know, what you're seeing is going to happen. <laughs> uh, but I think with 34 seconds left, I started tearing up, and, and you know, I, everyone was getting really excited. I was looking over at the bench. The guys were jumping around, and my family's right behind the bench, so it was hard. To, it was really hard to stay in the moment, but uh, I was just so uh, so overwhelmed and excited that um, I'm glad Coach took me out because I probably would have done something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up here to row one, the third seat in. Brett Friedlander, Wilmington Star News. Uh, Theo. Uh, uh, here we, we go. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Coach. Make sure everybody gets a picture here. I want this. I want this to be seen by everybody. Theo, were you, were you aware that the other three number one seeds today or yesterday uh, all lost? And what was the difference? Why were you guys different when you know when you were tested like that? You guys had the answer. You were able to rise to the occasion. Then the other ones may not have. Um. I think it was just our focus. Um, we were watching the game. I'm not going to lie. We was watching the game, the Syracuse game. We saw they were down, but we all agreed as a team to turn the TV off. 
and just focus on our game. We control our own destiny, and that's what we did. I think we have one on the other. Do we have one on the other side of the curtain or not? <coughs> okay, row four here at the end, Mark. Mark Narducci, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Theo, could you just talk about the lift that you and Kennedy both gave them in the in the second half, especially after neither of you took a shot in the first half? Um, basically, we just let the game come to us. We didn't want to force anything. Um, Coach just he preaches to us to just take take the shot the team wants, and uh, I think pretty much all the shots that we took were shots with. Our team was very comfortable with, and of course, with them going in, it helped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll stay in row four, just two, three seats in. Lindsay Schnell, Sports Illustrated. Theo, did you invite yourself here tonight, or did Coach say you could come <coughs> because you were such a spark off the bench? Um, just say you have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, up here at the end of row one. Zach DraftKingValor.com. Bryce, how did you so effectively dominate your matchup with, with uh, Zach August? Well, he wasn't really guarding me most of the game. I mean, they had Pastore on me at one point, and I mean, they had Colson on me at one point. Beecham was on me at one point. So, I mean, was Zach, I mean, Zach really didn't he really didn't play as much as we thought he would because I mean, I, don't, I think he was in foul trouble. So, I mean, it's I, mean, I, mean, I saw a lot of a little bit of everybody. So, I mean, I just try to just get it in the paint and just shoot my shots. Okay, we'll stay uh, in row one here. Brooke Pryor, North State Journal. Theo, you finally did make it up here. How's it going so far? And do you want to come back for another press conference? Um, I, I'll be all right if I don't come. I'll just <laughs> crash it again. <laughs> nah, but I mean, I, I just wanted to step up for my team. And that's how you, I guess you earn your way up here. I didn't really care about being up here. I just wanted to, I just try to make everybody loose. Theo was being Theo, and he does yeah. a great job of that. And yeah. today he does a great job of that and, help, and helping our basketball team yeah. making a nice trip to Houston. Okay, we'll go end a row here in row two, and then we'll go. Jeremy Schneider, Star Ledger. Guys, you're the last number one seed left. <clears throat> Clearly some really good teams, but you're playing probably your best ball of the year right now. Do you feel like you're the favorite to win it all at this point? Start with Marcus. Uh, I, I think we always thought we were going to be the favorite because in our minds, when we're playing our best basketball, we feel like we can't be beat. Uh, so that's a mentality I'm sure all four teams have going in. Um, and there's some, I mean, Oklahoma and Villanova, those are number one seed worthy teams. So it's not like we're the only team that had a great season left. And Syracuse has put together a terrific run, so they're in it too. Um, but at the same time, we feel like when we're playing our best that, you know, uh, we're, we're happy with any matchup we get. Bryce? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, I definitely feel like we're the favorite just because, I mean, why wouldn't you feel like you're the favorite in this tournament? I mean, you, you want to go in there with a very confident and you don't want to go in there scared. So, I mean, it's, why, you, why wouldn't you want to be very confident and say you're, you're the favorite? And Theo? Um, I, like, I like what y'all try to tell us that we're underdogs. I mean, I think it brings a fire to us, and uh, I think it helps out a lot. Okay, so I think on the other side of the curtain, row three. I, don't, I can't see him, but maybe the players can. Yep. Uh, Mark Armstrong, ABC 11. I was hoping Marcus and then Theo and then uh, Roy, one of the big plays in that second half was started by you out battling Zach August for a rebound, and then you got it to Kennedy. Um, can you just take me through your portion of that play, and then same thing for you, Theo, and then Coach, just give me your impression when you saw that unfold. Uh, yeah, um, I was on the weak side, and Coach is always – telling us the guards get back in and help the big guys rebound. So I just jumped as high as I could. And I think August still tipped it first. Uh, but I just stayed after it. And me and him kind of like tipped it off each other three or four times. And I was able to come up with it and save it to Kennedy. And then Theo ran the floor. And you know, I guess I'll pass it off to him what he did with it after that. Theo? Uh, <laughs> I caught the ball. <laughs> Got a little nervous. No, nah, I'm just playing. I caught the ball. I I saw Isaiah, and he was pointing up. So I was like, all right, I'm give him a chance. And I just threw it up there, and he took care of the rest. So, oh, yeah, I did. And then I looked at Coach, and he was clapping. So I was like, all right, because yeah. that was a little marginal. <laughs> Coach? And my part of it, I said, Hurst, let's get back, get back, get back. That's all I was saying. I was clapping and screaming, get back on defense. OK, stay on this side of the curtain, row one. Uh, Aaron Bracey, AP. For any of the players, I'm wondering if you saw your coach uh, cut the net and hurt his finger, cut his finger, I guess, and wondering what, what, what you think of that, and what do you think of his net cutting ability? Marcus? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, he should be used to cutting nets. <laughs> it's something he's done several times in his career, but, you know, um, 
couple games ago, he was bleeding as well, and he, he came in the huddle, and he was like, guys, I'll, I'll bleed for you guys if you keep playing the way you're playing. Uh, so I guess uh, he wanted to, <laughs> wanted to do it again. It might be good luck. So we'll, and we'll get him patched up and <laughs> see we'll if he starts bleeding again. And we'll have uh, Bryce as well. Oh, hey, like no. Marcus said, we'll take it. Hey, he, <laughs> he's, he's bled the last couple games. He keeps biting his lip and his, and his tongue. And then <laughs> now he uh, – he cut his finger, so I mean, it must be like Murray said, it must be good luck. So keep bleeding, coach. <laughs> Just not too I told, much. I told him I'll do that, and I'd do it again. <laughs> but uh, I was, I did bite my tongue, and it was bleeding the whole first half uh, two nights ago. It's not very pleasant, but I was screaming at Bryce to get his rear end up off the ground. He'd slipped and fallen. He took a nap instead of getting up and running back on defense. Yeah, he did. He did. And so today I was up there cutting a the net, and I started to take a step back and. Uh, Felt like the ladder moved a little bit, and I grabbed. And when I grabbed, I grabbed the end of the scissors, and it started bleeding. I've really got very good looking blood. It's very bright, very deep to colors. <laughs> All right, we'll go to row three, uh, third seat in. Uh, Nicole at Rack USA Today. This is for Marcus, Bryce, and Coach. Um, can you describe Theo being Theo in your own words? As, can I go? Go ahead. Go ahead. Marcus. Hey. Um, I mean, the easiest way to describe it is just like, I mean, just look, like, just watch him, be, watch him be himself. Um, he's just really energetic. Uh, he always brings positive energy. Uh, he's just kind of the guy that you want to have in your locker room. Uh, no matter what the situation is, he, he makes it fun. He keeps it loose. Uh, he's a terrific basketball player as well. And that, that always helps, you know. Um, but, yeah, he's just Theo. He, uh, there's no adjective that can aptly describe that man. And Bryce? I mean, did, did you see the way he walked up here for the, at the beginning of the press conference? And I mean, that's just who he is. I mean, he, he brings the he brings up a lot of fun to the locker room when we, we're all like stressed out. I mean, he kind of eases everybody's mind, and I mean, he just likes to have fun. But when he steps in those lines, I mean, he's a totally different person, just like the rest of us. Okay, we'll go to fourth row, third seat in, and then we'll come back up front for for, for the last couple. Marcus, coach has talked the last few days about how coaching this team has been a salvation for him, you know, amidst everything that's going on. For you guys to get into another Final Four, what does that mean to you? I mean, it means the world to us. I'm um, sure it means a lot to him as well. Um, we, the, the stuff we always talk about off the court is well documented. We don't need to spend a whole lot of time talking about that today. But uh, it's, made, it's made this a little bit sweeter. You know, it's been a, it's been a tough four years in Chapel Hill. Um, but to come out on top and with this group, uh, you know, how much scrutiny we've gotten, even as a one seed, how many people have doubted us to either not make it out of the first weekend and not be able, tough enough to win the ACC. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't even have us in the Final Four, a lot of the experts and stuff. So to do that with this group, uh, you know, we love Coach and Coach loves us and we just want to, we don't ever want it to stop. So I think it's just been a, it's been a special ride. All right, we'll do our last two up front here. So end of the row. Zach Drapkin, Vavil.com. For any of you, is there are there any early thoughts on your matchup with Syracuse? Uh, Theo? We just won. I'm going to enjoy this one first. <laughs> I tell you, my man is coachable because I started to say, let us enjoy this dadgum game. <laughs> okay, let us enjoy this. All right, we'll go, we'll go to our final question then. Bryce, you had 12 rebounds today. I believe Notre Dame had 15 as a team. Um, was, yeah. Check this. The stat really? sheet. Yeah. yeah. Was that a product of, of just the, the height advantage <coughs> that you had, you guys had? Or uh, you know, was there something else? Was it just like Coach likes to say, want to? Well, first, I mean, their best rebound, it wasn't in the game, most of the game, it was in foul trouble. So, I mean, that really hurts them when it comes to rebounding. And then, I mean, it is the, it was a size difference for them. And, I mean, we got a lot of long and linky athletic guys on our team that can really go up and get it. I mean, I just, Try to just go get it every time it was up in the air. So, okay, we will dismiss the student athletes at this time. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Okay, we'll take questions for Coach. Once again, just your name and your outlet before you ask your question. We'll start in the aisle, actually standing. No, I'll start with way in the back, standing, and then we'll start moving up. Michael Luongo, AP Broadcast. Coach, uh, it was pointed out back on Thursday, the guys hadn't been to a Final Four since 2009 for the school with a lot of expectations and so forth, and you didn't kind of <coughs> pay attention too much to that now. But to get back to a Final Four, uh, you've been this 
like five times in your as a coach for yourself, how special is it for you and for the school to get back there? It is really special, and that's the reason I even know how many times we've done it. Uh, this is my eighth time in 28 years as a head coach. I've had great players that have taken me. The thing I'm really proud of is I've taken my high school coach with me to eight Final Fours, and he'll be going again this weekend. But, uh, you know, Marcus, the things he said there were really nice, and I've said to some, this to some of you folks out there on the court. I've never wanted anything in my life for someone else as much as I wanted to get this bunch to the Final Four. I'm corny, I'm old-fashioned, I'm uh, anything you want to say, but fortunately for me, I was very lucky that I've had some big-time players. In 2007, I was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, and the worst feeling I've ever had is I started thinking about my 97 team at Kansas because I felt like I hadn't done anything because I didn't get those guys to the Final Four, and that was something I'll never get over, and this one would have been even tougher. And so uh, what those kids, uh, I wanted it so much for them but I guess in the back of my head, I didn't want to have those regrets, too. But uh, never in my life have I ever wanted anything as much for somebody else as I wanted these guys to go to Houston. Okay, we'll go to the last row on the end of the row. Karin Phillips, News Journal. Coach, with the Final Four set, uh, just your thoughts on all four teams being impacted and led by juniors and seniors. Carl, I'll pre I appreciate you. You know, we're going to do media stuff for 14 hours this week, and we're going to practice seven minutes. So I'll answer that question. I really do want to enjoy the heck out of this one right now. And um, Oklahoma, Lon Kruger is one of my best friends. Um, Jay Wright's a guy I admire and what he's done with his club. Uh, Jimmy boeheim has been around since the Rocks cooled. So I look at coaches first, you know, but they've done great jobs with their teams. And, uh, you know, Buddy Heald has put on a show all year long. Jay Wright's club has just, just been sensational. And Jimmy's one of those old guys that uh, – uh, doesn't say much, but he's probably uh, uh, laughing himself crazy right now because people ask him why he made the tournament. And he not only made the tournament, but he's going to Houston. So it says a lot about our league, too, because uh, I don't even remember, like, Syracuse was like 9-9. Nine and nine. Does anybody know what our Syracuse was in our league? That's a pretty doggone good uh, indication of how good our league was, too. But I'm happy for all those guys. And, like I say, we're going to get to practice seven minutes in Houston and have you guys asking us all these daggum questions for four hours. Before we take our next question, just a quick and you note. You guys are giggling, too, so you know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, UNC locker room is scheduled to close at 11.55. It is 43 right now, so we'll keep this moving along, but just letting you know that. A uh, couple up here in the front row. We'll start in seat two and then seat four. Brooke Pryor, North State Journal. Roy, Kennedy really started out the second half. I think he had all eight of your points to start off. What kind of halftime adjustments was he making that made him be more effective to start that half? Well, you know, it was strange because we were having such a difficult time guarding their offense in the first half, and we tried to go small. And I told him at halftime, I don't want to stay small because we have an advantage with size, and the inside game should be an advantage. So I told those guys, I'm going to put you back in the game, but you better get down and play some defense. And I said to uh, Kennedy and Isaiah, we had four – and, and uh, Bryce, three of our four turnovers in the first half were our big guys, and they're just being silly. You know, Kennedy just lost the ball. Bryce just lost the ball, you know, and, and Isaiah charges a guy. So that was three of our four turnovers. I said, I want to play you guys, but you got to be effective. And I thought Kennedy really was around the basket and scared me at one time because it looked like Demetrius had really rolled his ankle badly, but he bounced right back up. But Kennedy was big for us during that time period. We'll stay in the front row and the seat, fourth seat in. Coach Zach Gelb here, WHIP Radio. You talk about how much you wanted to get this group to the Final Four, but what makes this group so fun for you to coach? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not anything that hadn't been talked about for a few years, but uh, my salvation and the time I've enjoyed my life the most has been on the court coaching these kids. And it hadn't always been smooth, and even this year, uh, I don't think Luke's in here, but Luke DeCock asked me yesterday because until three weeks ago, this was the least appreciated really good team I've ever coached and the most criticized really good team I've ever coached. And so I got tired of listening to all that stuff, and that made me want some things even more for them. I mean, everybody had a solution, you know, what our problems were. We were pretty doggone good. We'll go to row three, second seat in. Henry Bush, now explanation. Coach. You, is, is there any common thread or maybe any similarity that stands out to you between the 05 team, the 09 team, and this team? Uh, yeah, really good players. <laughs> Other than that, uh, this team's gotten better defensively, 
and I think particularly the 09. 05 uh, got better throughout the whole year. We had some good defensive stances at several points. 09 didn't really do much defensively until we got to this stage in the season. Uh, this team started getting better and better, and probably the guy that started working hard more, more intensely and harder than anybody was probably Bryce because I've been after him about his defensive play all year long, and Kennedy would be second. And I think those guys really picked up their play on the defensive end, and everybody else continued to improve. So I'd say that'd be the biggest thing. Okay, we'll go to row five. We don't score people. the ball quite as easily as the 09 team did. You know, in 09, we just scored the ball so easily. We'll go to Art in row five. Yeah. Congratulations, Coach. Um, we've both seen a lot of Carolina basketball over the years, and I was thinking, was this as good of a total team effort with everybody contributing when things started going a little rough than you can ever remember? No, Art, I'd probably say so. I'd have to think about it. You know, 77 when everybody got hurt, uh, you know, and everybody, yeah. you know, John Kuster picked his game up and, mm -hmm. and all those guys, while Phil and Walter and everybody was hurt, I think I remember back to that point. Some of these people in here now are, weren't even alive in 77. But uh, uh, I do think that it really was a total team thing. And, uh, you know, Theo made three huge plays, uh, the steal, the dive on the floor, the loose ball, the call, the timeout, and the two offensive rebounds for baskets. Kennedy, who I've been on so hard and really did some good things for us in there. Uh, uh, I think that Nate in the first half was really big for us. I think Nate had three field goals. Or two of them, two of his two his only two field goals, excuse me, were in the first half, and so I think you look down there, and I think we did get a lot of contributions from a lot of guys. We'll go to the end of the row of row four, and then we'll come to row two. Anthony Sula Heffinger, Yahoo Sports, Coach. You mentioned the runs that Notre Dame would make, and then your team would come back and make another run right away. Can you just speak about the nature of the game and how <coughs> it seemed like you guys were just trading blows one after another until the end when you finally pulled away? You know, most games has their peaks and valleys. Most times you have good runs. The other team's going to have some runs, too. If you're significantly better, you know, they don't usually have one that lasts as long. Coach Wooden used to say that he full court pressed because he'd have a run of 8 to nothing, 12 to 2 during a game. If you have one or two of those, that usually wins a game for you. And that was 50 or 60 years ago. Uh, but I'm always confident in my team not folding. I really am. And... Uh, you know, when they made the run, you know, we started with Kennedy facility turnover, and then they made, we went behind on the ball screen, and, you know, Demetrius backs up and knocks a three. Uh, they pull in there, and we didn't get a hand up on his three, I mean, his two-pointer from about eight feet. So we made some mistakes. And then uh, we just talked about during that timeout. I'm serious. I was going to tell them the same thing I said to our team in 2005 in the national championship game. We had a 16-point lead on Illinois, and they came back and tied it. And I called a timeout. I said, God, we're in great shape. Because did you think that team was going to give in? They've won 37 games. So I told this team about that before this week, I think. And so we t always try to get them to understand nothing's going to change if, as long as you, unless you keep playing. You keep playing, you can change some things. If you give in, you have no hope. And so I was really proud of my team. We'll come up to row two, end of the row. Yes. Jeremy Schneider, Star Ledger. Coach, you, you talked a little bit about the scrutiny you faced uh, after the Indiana win, and, and then tonight, does that scrutiny the? I mean, the doubters. I'm that, not sure yeah. I understand what scrutiny you're talking about. Uh, uh, we talked about a couple seconds ago the, the, from from critics the facing saying. Oh, I, no. I was saying that. But that was what was going uh, on I'm three sorry. or four weeks right. ago, not gotcha. since the Indiana oh, no, game. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. You just talked about it after the Indiana game. That's my fault. Um, okay. th that anyway, does that make this trip especially validating or vindicating for you? I don't think it validates anything. We had a problem. We're embarrassed. We're mad. We're ticked off about what happened. But we know that men's basketball had nothing to do with it, and we were very proud of that. But again, as I said the other day, my integrity and credibility has never been questioned. And some people, particularly some media people, took their chances. And uh, I didn't like that at all. And I'll never forget over that. But uh, the bottom line is I was able to go to practice every day. and. Uh, my team made it a heck of a lot of fun, and I'd like that to be the story instead of the other junk. The other junk's gotten about a million times more publicity than, uh, uh, than I care to think about. We'll come down here to row one. Was it your game plan to pound the ball inside uh, from the get-go, or was it more <coughs> a product of just how things transpired over the course of the game? That's our game plan all the time is we've got to try to get the ball inside. We have good players inside. We have scores in size, and we have inside, excuse me, and we have a size advantage o over uh, Notre Dame. Uh, but Coach Smith, you heard me say this the other night, your game plan's good for the first six minutes, and, and then you got to go by the seat of your pants. They went to the slow down kind of thing to try to milk the clock to go late. 
and we weren't doing a very good job of covering when it did get into late clock. We tried to go one three one trap. We tried to double the screen on the ball. We changed the way we were playing the screen the whole second half, and all of a sudden that worked a lot better for us. But uh, uh, for us, we were just trying to find something that would work because at halftime, you know, we're shooting 64% and they're shooting 58%. So I wasn't real pleased with their defense at halftime, to say the least. Any more questions for okay, <coughs> the last row? We'll take the final question in the last row. Coach, uh, I know there's always a lot of talk about, I'm sorry, John Small with Philadelphia Daily News, a lot of talk about the one and done and the value of having a player or that talented. But when you look at your team with Marcus and Bryce, and then you look at this Final Four, which is going to be a senior-dominated Final Four, can you just talk about the value of having experience and mm -hmm. maybe doing it a little different, like recruiting guys who are going to be around a while so you can – build a continuity and build a team. I've always said I want a little bit of both. I want some of those great players like a Marvin Williams or a Brandon Wright who came and played for us one year and then left. But I also want some guys who are going to be staying around for a long time. Uh, I think the value of college basketball is pretty impressive. I think guys appreciate that and appreciate what happens. Uh, Bryce came in, was not a McDonald's All-American. But he's one of the, I guess that's 25 players. He's one of the best 25 players in college basketball right now. Uh, Marcus is a great student athlete, and he's gained a great deal, and uh, I think he's enjoying himself right now. Tim Duncan was not a North Carolina guy, but he's a guy I had as much respect for and still have as anybody I've ever been around. And I even asked him when his Olympic qualifications in 2003, I said, Tim, are you one of those any ABC guys, anybody but Carolina? And uh, he said, no, I'm not, Coach. I said, good. And he said, I'm ABCD, anybody but Carolina or Duke. You know, so he let me know where he stood right there. But he had to go, because I, I wanted to ask him and see what his statement was, because I had been told that he said, why should I go do now what I'll be much more prepared to do later on in my life? And he did say that, and I told him how proud I was, because it's okay. Every individual gets to make their own decision. It's okay for Marvin Williams to go to the NBA after one year of Brandon Wright. But it's also okay for Bryce Johnson to hang around and get better and better and better and go through some experiences that will be good for him. So there's no one rule that's perfect for everybody. But I like a mix. I like some of those guys that hang around. But, you know, if there's a seven foot ten guy out there with uh, uh, that could shoot threes and block every shot in the world, if he wants to come and be one of my partners for one year, I'll take him. Uh, but I do like a mix of some kids. And the relationships that you can build with kids over four years, I don't think you can put a value on.